5,010 pounds, one owner, originally sold right down the street at Haylet RV of Coldwater, Michigan. A handy Springdale 2450 rear bath singles or couples camper coming over here. Uh, basically, folks just reached a point they weren't camping in it too much anymore, said, I don't know, maybe it's time to let this one go on to the next family. Power awning, power jacks, enclosed belly, a lot of good stuff going on here. And since they're done, there's a bunch of accessories in that pass-through compartment there that are going along with it. There are things you probably need, and hey, now you don't got to pay for them. That's always good. And at a glance, you know, it's easy to kind of miss some of the finer details on this, which is why I want to put this video together, because there are a couple little things on here that are some standout kind of qualities. Like you might have noticed as we uh, work our way back up top, it is centrally uh, ducted air conditioning. A lot of smaller campers in this class and category and budget range tend to not be ducted. So that will help keep this thing far more evenly cooled. It's also LED lighting, not incandescent, as you typically are uh, common to find big window over here, which is really nice next to that uh, sofa uh, arrangement to get some cross breeze, especially when you have the, the door open and just using the, uh, you know, the screen door portion of your main entry door. So you get this awesome, awesome airflow going around. Big window overlooking the dining too that we'll get a better look at in just a minute. Now there's a couple little things the previous owner put in, like they added this miniature little countertop thing right here. That could easily be removed with a screwdriver. If I take one step back, you'll see in the bedroom, there's a couple like, uh, you know, shirt hangers or whatever that they put up here. They're not exactly level, but they could be pulled down. No sweat, you know. So other than a couple little things like that, she looks pretty solid. She looks pretty good. Used, not abused. It was not used very much. Again, that's the whole reason that it's here. Big farm sink with a high rise sprayer faucet. It was always a uh, crowd pleaser kind of feature and double drawers right there that pull out for you. Um, a lot of brands that build a floor plan like this, of which, I mean, we see thousands of them every year at Halet RV, different RVs. Um, they, drawers are something that are often missing from a basic little individual or couples camper like this one. Although you have some guests sleeping between the dinette and the sofa, there is storage below that dinette. Previous owner did install a TV. They did keep their own TV, but they were kind enough to leave the mounting hardware behind. So knowing where and how to mount that is now very, very easy. You don't have to try to figure out where are the studs and the walls and all that kind of stuff. That is Bluetooth and stereo. If you want some sort of DVD function, my recommendation, get a small TV with a DVD player already built into it. And there you go. That's just about as easy as it gets right there. Now our bathroom door, you notice, doesn't go up to the ceiling. That is by intention so that if you are camping off-grade in a smaller camper like this, which a lot of people tend to do, you could leave your vent fan running and it will pull the air in through your like dining windows, you know, to keep you comfortable. Now, that little, let me get all the way in here. I like the, this corner right here where the uh, toilet and stuff is at. That window does open for airflow, although obviously you have privacy shades there. It looks like the previous owners may have at some point had the paper towel holder installed over here. And that is exactly why so many manufacturers who include things like paper towel holders, or, or toilet paper rather, they will actually leave them uninstalled so that you can put them where you feel is correct. Because if they put them where they think is correct, you're always going to think they are wrong. No tub. A nice standing corner shower uh, is a uh, popular thing here. And a medicine cabinet, not just a mirror glued to the wall. Again, basic campers sometimes lack features like that. And we've got all kinds of floor space in here. There's plenty of room to actually be able to get dressed. Now our uh, bathroom storage is fantastic because if you look inside these cabinets right here, there's just a ton of uh, extra space. You could throw some shelves in there. You could do, I don't know, man, a little bit of anything you ever wanted inside there. Um, heading our way back outdoors. Well, outdoors, out of the bathroom door to the living area. Again, there's that breeze window for the dining. I said we get a better look at in just a minute. Although it's so bright outside, the camera goes, ah! Oh! It's, it's almost like the camera starts squinting when everything gets dark like that. Now, one of the cool things here is because this is a um, no-slide camper, it is a completely carpetless floor. So it's real easy to maintain and keep clean that way. Up front here, we've got a very private bedroom because, you know, the sofa wall basically just facilitates a, uh, a more private bed space. And I like that fold-down armrest. That is something that the Cherokee group, like Cherokee, Wolf Pup, um, Gray Wolf, that you find at Haylet RV, they were the first to do that. And you watch so, so many other brands kind of jump on that train. Um, up front, the bedroom is simple but effective. You know, it doesn't do anything more than it needs to, but that's really the entire goal of the RV. 
And uh, a classic little keystone feature here that's easy to miss is a little laundry chute. So if you want to keep yourself a laundry basket right under there in the pass-through compartment, you have a place for yesterday's clothes now that it's today. Now, if you see any of our Halid RV videos, you know that one of the things I like to do is if I see something, I say something. Like I mentioned that those aren't level, but that's not really a big deal. I did notice that over there, though. And it does look like at some point, um, either there was some kind of exterior window seam failure, or they left the fire escape egress window open or cracked a little bit, and it rained a little bit. And there is the signature of that going down. Now, this carpet here looks like someone's trying to hide something. That was actually just kind of in the way. But this, this is all solid. This is all solid. So it does appear just to be surface dribble. It doesn't appear to be inside the wall leakage. Here's the thing, though. I don't expect you just to take my word for it. Even though I just did a Hulk Hogan foot stomp on that thing, I still don't expect you just to take my word for it. I think it's reasonable to try to give you the best interpretation of what I see that I can. And I welcome you folks to come, put your hands on it, and form your own opinions and I'm pretty confident you'll come up with the same answer that I just did. Now our front pass-through under that bed is just packed with stuff. You see the little uh, centipede thing for your sewer hose. I actually had a couple of those. And you see a bunch of like um, foam copper pipe uh, insulation tubing stuff. Uh, a lot of people use stuff like that in different areas of the RV to make sure that like you don't like bash your head into it or anything. Now usually they use that stuff on a slide out, but with this RV having no slide, I'm almost confused as to why it's there. So we do have power awning, four corner, power stabilizer jacks, power tongue jack. Everything on this is push button simple and easy. It is a simple series camper, but it's also simply easily operated, which is kind of cool. And if I get down here a little bit closer, take a knee, get us underneath it, you can see it does have an enclosed underbelly as well. And there's a good look at one of those uh, stabilizer jacks. So it does have a little bit of seasonal protection. It is not intended to be some kind of cold weather Arctic rig though. My understanding is the RV has spent most of its life parked, so things like the tires look pretty good. And, you know, since we did have that one question around the bedroom window, I thought I'd walk around here and see. The thing is, when I look around it, everything looks really good. It's my personal assessment. I have, I'm not a tech. We haven't uh, officially diagnosed anything. But that rusty water streak that you saw down the interior wall panel, I don't believe it's from a leak. I don't believe it's from a seam failure or lack of upkeep. I'm very confident, although, you know, again, I, I'll tell you, I can't personally guarantee that that was actually just from somebody leaving that window open or cracked. Maybe they got a little too aggressive with a power washer once. I've seen things like that happen. Um, you know, people don't realize you know, how, how dangerous high pressure water can be. You know, you, if you are cleaning your camper with a power washer, it works great, but you can't just go <laughs> whole hog, you know. Here's an interesting note, something that you totally can't see, but I remember from when we did sell these brand new, is the floor in this RV. The floor decking is one piece. It's five eighths, it's one piece. It's not like four by eight sheets. And it actually has a 50% stronger load capacity as compared to plywood. It's called Dynaspan. You actually still see that used in the bigger Cougars in Montana's today down at Halet RV, the big fifth wheels. So they're the full-time luxury camping fifth wheels Keystone makes. This essentially has the same floor methodology and decking material. Similarly, it has the same general rafter uh, methodology and decking material as those Cougar and uh, uh, Montana fifth wheels. You got a 3 8 fully walkable roof up there. I like that shower on the backside. Very handy for a number of things. And again, kind of a good thing to see. They were obviously stocked up and prepared to take care of. They got roof uh, conditioner. They got exterior wash and wax. They got all kinds of random things in here intended to take care of the RV. So again, I really don't think that bedroom uh, wall thing is a leak. I support that by saying that, first of all, they obviously had tons of cleaners. Secondly, um, the seals all look good. Third, uh, the, the wall paneling and the flooring is not soft. If it was a leak, it would have been soft before it showed signature like that. But again, I'm just some guy. You don't know, more than likely. <laughs> so don't take my word for it. Come put your hands on it in person, but you can be pretty confident when you make the drive. It's for a good reason. You're not just wasting your time. And short of that, Give us a call. We do it all. Take care. Stay safe. Have fun. And happy Halet Camping, everyone.